I'm a junior marketing major from Petal, Mississippi, and I have been serving on GUI Exec this year. Let me tell you, I am so excited that you all have joined us and I want to encourage you to keep engaging with our program over the next couple of days. This is one of the many topics that our webinars will be covering today, and we are excited to have experienced panelists with us. Internships and jobs are something you should think about sooner rather than later. Our panelists will offer tips on the search process, interviews, and much more. They will also walk you through Handshake, an online platform that houses job and internship opportunities. If you have any questions throughout the session, please feel free to ask in the QA in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. And we have some additional staff members and GUI exec leaders ready to answer those. Throughout the webinar, we will share some of those questions with the panelists to get some answers directly from them. Before we get started, let's start with some introductions of our wonderful panelists. Hi, my name is Paige Jones and I'm the program director for the Center for Pathway Experiences here on campus. So I help students find, fund, and finish an internship or any type of experience that really helps you get experience for what you want to do after graduation. My name is Jasmine Miller and I'm the coordinator for job location development and I locate and develop off campus positions for our currently enrolled students and I also help students finding jobs on campus also. Awesome. So uh, let's start off with differentiating your roles and the types of programs that you offer for students. So if you two want to go into that and how uh, you guys differently attack your, um, your roles within your office, um, you know, feel free to go ahead. I can start. So my office generally is working with internships. It's called the Office for Pathway Experiences because a pathway experience doesn't have to be necessarily an internship. It can be a part-time job, but it's not always. So there's Jasmine's office as well, but it can be a part-time job. It can be clinicals if you are going to be a nursing student. It can be student teaching if you're trying to be an educator. It's really just any type of path that can help you get to those next steps that you want. Your next steps after college could be graduate school or it could be a job. So really, any and that's why research can be included as well if it's done like you know with the correct mentor and everything like that so those can also count as pathway experiences so my office is really here to help i said it before but find fun and finish a pathway experience so i do one-on-one -on -one consultation with students and that way I can help you provide, I provide resources that you can use to help you search for those, which we'll talk about. Handshake is one of our big ones. It is our main one, but we do have other ones that I share with students in our meetings just to help you try to locate experiences that are more specific to you. Um, we also have a scholarship program that's built into Pathways. So every summer we offer a competitive scholarship to students who are trying to do a pathway experience um, off campus so we can't provide those scholarships to students who are trying to do things on campus but say you maybe see something out of state that you would like to do something that's in state but is unpaid anything like that that you may see that on handshake or any of the other platforms um, you have to apply by march 1st every year it's always March 1st. It's not broken, so we're not gonna change it. You apply by March 1st if you want to do a summer internship for that upcoming summer, and then we award students. So right now we have 10 Pathway Summer Scholars right now who have, um, who have our money and are doing these great things. So every summer we hope to award more. It was definitely harder with COVID, but neither here nor there and we help students finish so find fun and finish we do appointments we do scholarships and there's a reflection so after you do all those things you can do a reflection that we have and get a free graduation course that you can wear when it's time to graduate so for job location development i primarily assist students finding part-time jobs so you would book a appointment through the Career Services website and you would choose part-time jobs and you'll 
more than likely see me. And I basically give, I can provide a list of on-campus position, off-campus positions, job seeking tips, interviewing tips, resume critiques and um, consultations. Um, we do a part-time job and internship fair that um, Paige does um, co-sponsor that with us. Um, so every semester we have local employers come to campus. Well, now it'll be virtual, but usually they come to campus and they see anywhere from 300 to 500 students. And we usually only have about 24 employers. So they do have um, a lot of jobs available because it's usually retail or grocery stores or fast food. So they do have a number of different opportunities available. So I always encourage students to definitely visit our job fair and make sure that you're interacting with either me or Paige because when you guys start to get in freshman and sophomore, it makes it easier when you get to your junior and senior year, whether you need to get that internship that's um, required or you need the experience to make sure you know what you want to do once you graduate. And job, part-time jobs sometimes get lost because people just think of it as extra money or just a something they can't really use when they get ready to graduate. But if you start thinking about the competencies that you can gain from just a part-time job, you would be surprised how you can transfer the experience and be able to get your first entry level job with no problem. So that's kind of what I help with. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, you actually just touched on it, Jasmine, about the importance of all that. Um, but if I can ask each of you to go a little bit further into that and talk about the importance of taking advantage of internships and job opportunities and to how that apl applies to building one's re resume. I guess I'll go first since that's the order I put myself in. Um, so internships, I'll speak on the internship side, of course, but it's one thing that I've noticed a lot of students are unaware or and faculty and staff just the public in general think that internships should come later in someone's college career so maybe like junior year senior year when in reality I really want students to start doing internships as early as they can so second semester of your freshman year, I'm hoping that once you get acclimated and things like that, you can at least start going out and start seeing what's out there. So you can start getting into them by your sophomore year, by your junior year, you could have multiple internships to really build your resume up. It's really important to, and I say early because that's one of the biggest key things to help with the importance of it. Um, a lot of students won't even know what they want to do whenever they finish school. That's, that's scary to say, but I know I finished school with one major and then I got a job in a completely different major, in like a completely different field. But I will say that I didn't have an internship or any type of pathway experience when I was an undergrad. So when I finished with my major that I got spent this, all this money, this four long degree on, I still really didn't know what area of that degree that I wanted to get a job in and what I wanted to do and internships can really help you see the certain areas. Um, people can come into college with an idea that they want a certain job like one specific dream job that they have so they decide to go in and choose this major that aligns with that dream job and a lot of the times your major does not equal your job that you want. Sometimes it's just the experience that you get, but doing it earlier can save you a lot of time because maybe you might realize you don't even want to stay in the major that you're in after you've done an internship experience. I have had students who have done an, who thought they loved their major, did an internship and realized, ooh, I, you know, I don't like that. I'm happy that I realized it early so that's definitely one important thing for internships. You get the experience, you start to learn what you like, what you don't like. You're able to have a better idea on the types of real jobs that you would want to have because you've started to see how it is, you know, in certain roles. And it kind of just helps you with the transition from college life to the work world, because that's a transition that is not as heavily focused on. We have lots of these transitions to help you guys come into college and we welcome you and we do all these things. And then when it's time for you to leave, 
internships is one of those steps that we hope you take during the time so that way it is a transitional process for you when you graduate as well. Um, it helps you with certain career competencies that Jasmine talked about earlier. So with Pathways, we really focus on eight career competencies that are highly pushed out by NACE, the National Association of Colleges and Employers. And those competencies range from leadership to teamwork and collaboration, diversity and cultural influence. Um, and in between is eight of them, I'm not gonna list all of them. But those are competencies that employers expect for recent grads to have that you can gain during internships and part-time jobs. But I will let Jasmine talk more on the part-time jobs. So um, <clears throat> when students come to me, you know, it's usually like, hey, I didn't have enough scholarships, so I need to find extra money to, you know, supplement my income to make sure I can still have a decent living life while I'm on campus and still get to experience and have the full college experience. So I always explain to students, like, whether you are working at McDonald's, working as a server, working at Walmart, or any of these fast food or retail places, the amount of skills that you can gain is astronomical. I started out as a part-time worker at a shoe store and it took me about three years to gain to a management um, role but from my part-time job I just learned time management leadership skills when I had to help with the visual merchandising. Um, I learned of course about teamwork, um, intercultural, you know working with different cultures and things like that. So I learned all these things and I was still a part-time worker. And as I gained more experience, I realized that I was always going back to those things that I learned at my first job. So a lot of people just think like, oh, you come to college, you may do an internship, you may not, then you get this degree and then you leave. But in between that, you have to have some type of experience. So why would you want to try to develop soft skills at a entry level job when you should already have those soft skills? So why not practice on a part-time job before you get to the entry-level job? Just so, you know, when you make mistakes, you have someone there like, okay, hey, I know you're a part-time worker, but maybe you should try it like this. And you learn to work smarter and not harder. So part-time jobs are, you know, yes, they're extra money, but you, you want to really just look at and see what experience that you can gain. And even being a part-time worker, if you have three or four managers above you, are you looking at what they're doing? Are you seeing the skills that they, um, you know, practice towards you? Are you looking at like, can I learn that job? How did they get to where they are? And nine times out of 10, they started just where you were at. Um, one of our partners with Waffle House, they, they love to come to all of our fairs. When you go into Waffle House, you are a management trainee, but they make you start out as a server and you have to work every position at that company before you can even get your own district. And that's because they want you to see what your part-time workers go through, what everyone, the cooks, the servers, the cashiers, they want you to make sure that you know how to do everyone's job. So imagine if you already have those skills, you could probably finish that program twice as fast as anybody else because you already took those skills and developed them. So that's really a, a really big reason why I'm so passionate about making sure students don't only look at a part-time job as extra income, but as a stepping stone for your internship and then for your post-graduation um, career. And if I can add really quick onto what Jasmine said, you made a really good point where you started talking about um, how those skills can be used in other aspects outside of the part-time job. And that's something that we reflect on in the pathways reflection, but those skills, competencies, whatever you're picking up from, whether it's a part-time job or it's an internship, students have said in their reflections how it helps them better connect to their classwork as well. So even just learning certain things and experiencing that in the real world, when you come back to the class, things start to make more sense and it just starts to click more. You're able to connect those dots easier and then you can become more interested in your work um, because that is something that 
I've heard a lot of students say when it comes to those general ed courses, how, you know, why do we have to take these courses over again? I just want to take the classes that I want, you know, that are actually dealing with my major, dealing with what I want to do. But those skills, those basic competencies, those basic skills that you learn in those general ed courses, they all connect. So like their skills that you will need to use to be the most proficient at your job, whatever job it is, when it's time for you to graduate. Um, it's just so much easier to connect and students all the time are just like, I'm so happy I saw that in the real world because now it makes sense in class. For sure, absolutely. Um, and I think the overarching theme that you guys have kind of touched on is that students need to get started. Um, like especially incoming students, whether they're freshmen or transfer, it's important for them to, as soon as possible, be looking into those job opportunities and internships. Um, so with that in mind, when students are kind of going through that search process, um, what are some of the top tips that you would give to students when it comes to preparing for that um, and going through that search? So I can give a couple of quick tips. Um, one of the main things that I like to tell students when you're about to search for an internship, I feel like this can apply for any job or anything that you're looking at though, is to really just research the company that you're looking into. You and to, to research the company that you're looking into and to really pay attention to the words that you use whenever you're typing in trying to find a certain position. Um, because depending on the discipline that you're in or like the major you're trying to get, you may call a job one title and another company can probably have it named something else. Like I know for communications, they have so many like communications jobs and they'll just say like communications this, communications this, when really I'm trying to look for something more specific and so you may be typing in like communications internship and you won't really be pulling up all the options that you want. You might not even see things that you like when really you're trying to find something that deals with social media, you know? So instead of using the whole communications term, you want to be more specific with what you're using and what you're typing in. And we do have resources to help you kind of think of different words. Like we have something called, what can I do with this major? And that's an online resource that you can use just to, it breaks down your major into all different areas. So even if you know what you want to go in, you can just go to, what can I do with this major? Look up your area and then you have different keywords to help you search for more positions and more jobs um, just because that is one of the biggest tips I can give you to really think about what you're typing in because everything will pop up that has nothing to do with what you want. And also the tip of when I was going back to researching your company, I'll just say that whenever you're applying for internships, you know, jobs, if you get an interview, you're qualified. That's, that's just that. I always want students to be sure that if you get an interview with the company for a part-time job for an internship, that means you are qualified for that position. So at that time, I'm hoping that you've already done your research on the culture of the company. You know, what are their values? Have you looked at, you know, recent news articles on them? You know, what are certain things that you've seen? Because really, when you're going in for that interview that you're qualified to have the job for, they want to see who's the best match. Like they want to see who fits the best with our company. Like, do you match with what we want to do with our goals? So if you look at things like that ahead of time during your search, then, cause sometimes you might think a position is great, but if you had researched that company, you're just like, mm, I don't want to work for them. And that can just save you a lot of time. But those are just quick two tips for me. And then Jasmine can give some nice, probably better tips. Um, well, of course, make sure you use Handshake. <laughs> make sure you <laughs> log into your Handshake account. We give you free access, and it's just like Indeed. I know a lot of students do know what Indeed is. So Handshake, the employers who are in Handshake know that they're hiring college students. So even if you're looking for a part-time job, you don't have to worry about, well, will they work with my schedule? They know they're hiring part-time. They know they're hiring college students, so they know those college students' schedules vary. Um, 
just really be like pay say resourceful you know don't be scared to research i know we're so used to everything being right in our hands and it coming quick but sometimes you still have to dig sometimes it's not right there at the at the surface you have to dig a little deeper so um be mindful of when you're going to places and you're like oh i can never do that job someone <laughs> somewhere has to do that job so just always be mindful of that and if you're going in to look for a job i'm not saying you have to have on a three-piece suit every time but make sure you have on a nice t-shirt and some nice jeans with no holes um i know they're hard to find because i don't have any in my closet <laughs> but um no rips or anything like that and just make sure you're at least business casual and you know don't expect to interview but be be prepared to you know give a little blur about yourself and like Paige said, if they call you in, you're qualified. You just have to show them why you're the best fit and why you're the best person for the job. Um, if, when you guys are doing for either seasonal or summer work, just make sure you start as applying as early as possible. Most retail stores will hire all their associates by late October. So if you know you want to do seasonal work, you should at the beginning of October, you should already be applying for those different positions. Um, and of course, come to Career Services and meet with me. Um, I could be your biggest asset for you as far as letting you know who's hiring it around the um, area and just some tips that you can, you know, go deeper into the tips that I can give you and really help you craft your resume for certain different jobs. Because a lot of students, we know, especially if you're freshmen, you did resumes in high school, but those resumes that you guys do in high school don't quite translate into the professional world. So. Make sure you come to us so we can help you, you know, draft a better resume for either a part-time job or an internship. So that way you're utilizing the best, um, your best skills are on display because you only have like eight to 10 seconds to catch their attention. So you definitely want to make sure that you are, you know, um, communicating your best, your skills as best way as possible. Yes, and with resumes, my last tip, resumes and cover letters, please do not send out the exact same resume and cover letter and mass send it to a bunch of companies. Um, who, please don't do that. You need to tailor each resume to the job that you want. So I, I can't believe I didn't think of this tip. When you're looking at job descriptions that you want to, or internships, and you're looking at the descriptions and the job duties that entail in those positions, you want to be sure that you are pulling some of the wordage from those descriptions and duties and you include them in your resume or things that you have done. So, because some of these systems, they're going to pick up on those words. They're looking for certain things. So those are the, oh, there's, those are the words that they are going to see and pull through to, you know, for validation purposes quicker. And because some resumes won't even make it to the person who's getting them if it doesn't go through the system that they're using and if you don't match anything that they're asking for some of them won't even make it past the system to the person so be sure that you're tailoring your resumes and your cover letters for the specific opportunity that you want to get to have the best chances you know to have your resume pulled awesome um and so uh with that i know uh, students are always looking for more and more resources when looking for these jobs and we've touched on things like Handshake and different search platforms um, to help with that process. Um, but is there any, are there any other resources that you could uh, go deeper into or just talk more um, about Handshake in general and maybe just some general tips about the platform itself? Jasmine's like the handshake guru in the career services office. So I'm technically with Pathways on my own office, but we all share the handshake system. So my quick tips, which Jasmine can go and give you much better things than me, but my quick suggestions about the handshake platform is to first, I do not like handshake on the phone, on your phone. I really prefer handshake on a desktop or like an iPad, a bigger screen for more functionality. I feel like it's better to use handshake in. Um, and handshake has a lot of features that I show students that I feel like a lot of them don't utilize. They do have like this question, this Q&A section kind of in Handshake where you can go in and ask specific questions and they can get answered to you by anybody in the Handshake community. Um, and it 
it labels everything out. So there's a section where you see questions from other people and who have answered those. It separates into your questions that you have asked and your answers if you have answered anyone else. I feel like that's one of the most underutilized portions of Handshake, but they really do give good feedback. Um, one of the top questions is like, how can I get a Google internship? And it's like a, a PR marketing internship at Google or top PR firm. I remember that question specifically. And I remember, I, I remember seeing that question. And I was like, how bold to think that you can just ask this and somebody's just going to write you back like that. But they did. More than one person came and one person was a former intern, had a former internship at Google and answered and told them how they were able to get their internship and what they did to help them. So that's something on Handshake that I think is a great thing that's used. Um, you can also create filters in Handshake. So if you are looking for certain internships in certain areas, you can make a filter for that. So you don't always have to go through and type like internship, Dallas, Texas, you know, part-time, this, you know, those types of things you can pick what you want and you can save a filter and then you can always just go back and click on that filter. And when you're active in Handshake and you make those filters and things like that, it will send you emails on updates like, hey, I saw you were looking at this, you know, job. Don't forget to apply. And this person is still looking. I saw you peeped it. Like, don't miss out. So it'll send you updates like that as well. Um, but instead of that, those are the big things that I show students because instead of that, I'm just scrolling through the home page and Handshake is just very intuitive. So the more you use it, the more it learns you and the more, the better it is for you to use. Um, me, since all I do is look at internships for students, if you were to scroll mine, it's just internship, internship, internship. But I started noticing that at one point I was seeing a lot more of students in a certain major than I was of other students. So Handshake started tailoring it to me to show me positions in that major more. So if you're looking more in certain areas, you'll be able to see um, on your home screen different positions from those areas that you've looked in. It'll start showing you things similar and, you know, it's just a lot better to use when you use it more. Those are my Handshake tips. Um, so my, my biggest one is make sure you log in and complete your profile. So a lot of times, um, if you have, Handshake gives you, um, let me preface this by say, like she said, I do know a lot about Handshake. So if I start getting long winded, please let me know. <laughs> but um, Handshake gives you three settings that you can set your profile to. We have community, employer, or private. We always suggest that you do minimum of employer, so that way, if you're actively looking, an employer can search for your account. If you do um, community, employers and students can see your account. So community is where it will be more beneficial if you're trying to connect and grow your network of um, similar majors. So that was, that's where that would be useful. But definitely make sure that you upload your resume um, upload a class schedule if you know you have like a don't really have a good set time make sure you are upload that um, you can upload a brief color it can kind of be generic but like Paige said make sure you always tailor that um, and just make sure that you fill out every single section um, Handshake has a status bar so as you complete your profile and fill in each section your status bar will go from you know Beginner to I think like I think they call it all star or something like that. So you want to make sure that that task bar gets as complete as possible. Um, she did mention the filter. That's a really good thing. But with the filters, make sure you have your notifications set to receive those emails. Because if you don't have the notifications on, the emails won't come. Or they'll send the emails, but you won't get them because you're on. They're only being handshake. They won't come to your email. So make sure you definitely um, set that up. Um, in addition to the Q&A, they have a message form too. So if you're not comfortable with your question being displayed for everyone to see, you can actually search the job or the major or the type of students you're looking for and you can message students privately who have their profile set to community. Um, all of our events, whether they're career services, JLD or Pathways is listed in there, especially now with it being so virtual, 
So any professional development events that you would like to learn about, those will be definitely be in Handshake and you can see what employers are coming and if they're doing workshops for you all. Um, another big thing is Handshake sends you emails, but we also send you emails through Handshake. And that is so, it's more, um, it gives you more functionality. So instead of you having to click here and click there, click here and click here, or go and search for those internships, if Paige sends you a list of internships, you can apply for those internships right from your phone. Cause she'll attach them and then it'll open up and your application will be there. As long as your profile is already complete, you can just hit submit and your profile will be sent to that employer and it took all the five minutes instead of her giving you a job description and a title and then you have to go into Handshake, search for it and then apply for it and then hope it gets there. It all comes from your email. So Handshake is really good for students. Um, I just saw we had a question. Um, it's really good for students so that you guys learn how to go about the job search process. It gives you those tips. So now, as Paige said, once you're looking at different things, and instead of just that one job popping up, Handshake says, oh, you looked at this job, here's some similar jobs. So um, definitely just make sure you're using it so it can learn what you need. Um, and I think she touched on everything else. Um, but like I said, Handshake is, is they always updating it because it was made by college students. Um, so it's always updating. They are um, always rolling out new features. But if you ever need help with actually going through it step by step, we have some, um, we have five videos that show you how to do the five major parts of Handshake. And as the year go on, we'll add more videos to show you how to use each function of Handshake. And those are on the Career Services webpage. Awesome. So uh, I believe we have one question from the Q&A right now. Um, so uh, this person is asking, can you complete an internship during the fall or spring semester while still in school? Or do you have to take a semester off in order to do it? So if either of you want to tackle that, please go ahead. <laughs> I was actually going in and I was going to try to type it, but even better. So you can do an internship whenever. Doesn't matter this semester, fall, spring, summer, any of it's fine. It does depend on your specific college, what you can count for to credit though. Um, I do get a lot of questions asking about academic credit when it comes to internships and what can count and what can't count. That has nothing to do with the pathways office and everything to do with your specific college. So if you are trying to wonder if it will count in the spring and you can do it again in the fall and try to get academic credit, that you'll have to talk to the advisor specifically in your um, area. But if it's up to me, you can do an internship whenever and then you just build it and put it up on your resume. So that is, and but I can only give scholarships during the summer as well. So I'll say that again, I can only do that. Um, I wanted to read out the question that was before that one that I answered in the chat, but it says, is community service actually valuable? How do I put it on my resume? So depending on how you um, do your community service, you might actually be able to change that into re related experience and not just community service, but if you are in a student group, if you started on a board or something, you can actually change that. It, you don't have to just label it volunteer experience or community service. You can actually change that into related experience and pull from like Pace that pull those different job duties in that job you're applying for or internship and say, hey, well, it wasn't a paid experience, but this is what I learned and this is what I did that matches what you're looking for. So yes, community service, student groups are very valuable. I actually really love that you just touched on that um, because I was about to ask one last question um, when it comes to student organizations on campus. Southern Miss is always um, emphasizing the need to get involved, um, whether it be in those student organizations or within certain departments. Um, and I know that when it comes to that, some students can be somewhat hesitant when it comes to time management um, and seeing if that is really valuable experience in that field. So my question is, would you guys, do you guys have any advice for um, students that are looking in, to getting involved, but kind of concerned about those time management um, concerns, but also as well as, will I be able to apply this to a future job opportunity or internship, um, or am I um, not using my time wisely? Please join all the student orgs that you can. 
please get involved. Please, please, please. Um, student organizations and getting involved on campus, some of the best experience that you can have listed on your resume. And it's one of it's something that students, you really, you really shortchange yourself when it comes to student organizations. The more I talk to students who have been a part, I tell them how much you shortchange yourself on your resume from not highlighting those student organizations more. Student organizations on campus, they are planning events. They are mentoring students. They are getting out and volunteering in the community. You are doing social media campaigns. You are building some of the most valuable work skills that you can being a part of an organization. Um, I like to tell students any experience is experience for your resume if you can word it correctly, if you can emphasize, you know, express yourself in a way to show that I did this here, I can do this in this job and I can do it in this job because like Jasmine was saying earlier, these are transferable skills. These are soft skills that you're building. These are gonna make you employable to anybody. Um, there's you there, I hold student organizations in such high regard um, for campus life because you do, you meet some, you have some of the best relationships that you make, like you're networking for one, the people that you network and you meet in these student organizations from your advisor and who they know and who they can connect you with to the students that you're meeting and who they can connect you with to the organizations that you're volunteering at or the places that you're helping, the events that you're planning, the students that are coming to these events. I could go on and on about them, but when it comes to putting them on your resume, you should highlight them as such. Please do not shortchange yourself by not putting it on your resume. I've seen so many resumes come through my desk where students will have their student organization on their resume, but they just list it in like one line and that's it. When, and in the ideally student organizations can start and give you a solid resume before you have any real work experience because these people who you're applying for part-time jobs and internships, you're applying to those because you probably have not had a lot of experience before. They don't expect you to have a ton of work experience on your resume, but if you're involved on campus and you can showcase that experience, talking about how you planned an event and 150 people showed up, you had to track those people some kind of way, like you're really putting in serious work. You're doing real real deal work things in a student organization that you're doing for free and you don't realize that it's really work because you're enjoying what you're doing so even though it's so much fun please highlight it the best you can come see me in pathways i will tell it to you how it is and we're going to get your resume right i will show you some best ways because like jasmine said you don't you don't have to keep the same headers as everyone else you don't have to have it all say you know, relevant course experience, anything like that. You can tailor it, not we help students tailor to what fits best. But these employers know that if you're trying to do something small, you're not gonna have a lot of experience and student organizations are the way to go. Yeah, just everything Paige said, I'll say it twice. Um, and also if you're scared about time management, I'm a big person of writing things down so you know start with just time management of your classes like okay i have these three classes i have these these three tests i'm going to dedicate this amount of hours this amount of hours and this amount of hours so start small and you know buy a planner find a planner that works for you every planner out there is not work is not functional for you so make sure you find something that's functional for you a system whether it's using the note the one notes in microsoft or using google docs or using a project management system, whatever you need to do, find a system that works for you. Uh, some people, uh, I know I used to go in Paige's office and she'll have sticky notes everywhere, but that's how she kept track of everything. So as long as you have that system and you know you know how to write a to-do list, then you'll, you'll be fine once you start doing those student organizations. And those student organizations will teach you how to be better at time management. So don't be afraid to you know step out on a limb and you know 
you know, join a student organization. And if you do join, don't just be a member, be actively involved. Don't just join to say that you join. Make sure you're actively involved. So, and um, I saw a couple of questions come in. And one asked, is it true that resumes have to be confined to one page? We say one page because you only have eight to 10 seconds. And nine times out of 10, the employer is not going to flip to the back page. So that's why as you come to us uh, throughout your college career, we show you how to have those different sets of resumes. So maybe one resume, you have a lot of part-time job experience, so you're applying for another part-time job. So yes, that's what you want to showcase. But if you're going for an internship, and if you've done that research, or if you had that clinical, you're going to have the resume that showcases that first. So we say one page, but as you go along, it's going to be more than one page. But then you, you will learn what to take out and what to put in. So that's really like Paige said, it's just about showcasing what um, was best for the job or internship that you're applying for. I have personally, like, I have like two different things. I have one really long running resume that all of my experience that I choose, I put on there first. So when I start tailoring, different resumes for different things that I want to do, I can just go back to that list and then I can copy and paste so that way I don't lose that information. Um, but I did see another question come through and it asked, are remote virtual internships a thing with the pandemic happening? Absolutely. So I actually have been going through and sending out emails to students that are already um, active in handshake and everything that I'm able to go through. But so many companies have changed their way of working to remote and virtual right now. And it, I, I'm starting to think that they like it because I see more that are coming through for next semester as well. And, you know, they want to, they're still trying to do virtual remote, even if they can do in person. And I send out emails with links that are broken up in different um, different areas. So I'll break them up into like business and entrepreneurship, creative, you know, writing in this, legal. And so different sections for what you may be interested in. I don't do it by majors. I just have, you know, sections. So then that way you can go and see the different remote and in intern, virtual internships that are available. So if you do not get those emails or if you have not gotten them yet and you think you may not be on the list you can always just email me at pathways at usm.edu and then i'll just like send you those i'll just copy what i sent in the email and then i can send that to you as well so you can get those all the links are through handshake that i send so you will probably have, to, if you get it, you'll probably have to click the link you, and I would suggest you go through and create your account then if you get it and you haven't already activated it. So that way you can go in and if you decide to apply, how Jasmine was saying, it'll be easier for you to just submit it that way. But yes, they're definitely a thing. That's awesome. That, uh, we really appreciate y'all um, coming out and being able to answer these questions for students. Um, as well as myself. Um, if you, if, um, if each of you would like to put your contact information um, in the chat below, so students can maybe contact you if they have additional questions. Um, I know uh, they'll be able to find you at those websites that you listed as well. Um, so, but we really appreciate you guys going over the opportunities that students have, um, the all or nothing attitude they need to have going into these searches, um, and the uh, push for uh, advancing their careers. Um, and we really appreciate you guys. And uh, thank you so much. Hope you all have a good day. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>